This video will walk you through the Unit 9 lab volume of a mole of gas, the calculation section. By now you should have collected the similar data as above. Now this is just sample data, therefore your numbers are not going to be exact. I've done a few of the calculations that you're going to need to do right away to get it into units that are appropriate. For example, the mass of magnesium has already been converted to moles of magnesium. I'm not going to show you that calculation, nor am I going to show you how I got the uh, change the temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. To move forward, we need to do a couple of things. First off, you did not work at standard temperature and pressure, so we will eventually need to change it to standard temperature and pressure. But the very first thing that we need to do before anything is we need to adjust for the fact that we have vapor pressure. The room pressure, and therefore the pressure in your tube, um, in your tube was hydrogen gas and water. Therefore, the pressure total in your tube is equal to the pressure of your hydrogen gas plus the pressure of your water, your vapor pressure. We need to get rid of this vapor pressure out of our total. We just want the pressure of the uh, hydrogen gas. So, on your chart in your lab, you should have been able to determine based on your temperature what the vapor pressure for the water would be. In this case, at 22 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 19.8 uh, millimeters of mercury. So if our total is 766.4 millimeters of mercury, and I know my vapor pressure of my water is 19.8 millimeters of mercury, I can then figure out that the pressure of my water, or of my hydrogen gas, is simply the difference between them. So the pressure of my hydrogen gas is 746.6 millimeters of mercury. We're going to need that value moving forward um, so we can do our calculation. So we've now added the pressure of just the hydrogen gas that we calculated in, uh, before. And now we need to make some adjustments for the fact that we didn't work at standard temperature and pressure. So we need to actually convert it to be in standard temperature and pressure. So to do that, we're actually going to use the combined gas law which as you recall is P1V1 over N1T1 is equal to P2V2 N2T2. And because our, our bubble didn't actually change or the gases that we collected didn't actually change in uh, number of particles, what we collected, we collected. N is actually going to be a constant in this case. So we're going to put these in. So the the one values here, the initial, are our values, and the two values are the standard condition that we're converting to. Technically speaking, it wouldn't matter if you put the standard conditions as one and our conditions as two, uh, but just to kind of keep it straight, uh, make sure that you always use the same uh, technique. So pressure one, we're going to get from here. It is the pressure of the hydrogen gas. So I'm going to write that down. So 746.6 millimeters of mercury. And the volume of that gas that we collected was 36.7 milliliters. The temperature is the temperature of the gas, which is 294. Remember, we're working with gases, so we must be in Kelvin. And then we're trying to go to standard conditions. Standard condition for pressure is 760. And we're trying to figure out what our new volume actually is. And standard temperature is 273. And when I solve for V2 in this case, I end up with 33 
oops, apologize, 33.5 milliliters. Now this value does make sense if we think about it because our pressure went from 746 to 760, which means that it's increasing. And when we increase pressure, we would expect volume to actually decrease. And if we notice our pressure or our temperature is going from a higher pressure or higher temperature to a lower temperature, so as temperature goes down, volume should also go down. So twofold, we should expect to see our volume actually decrease. So now that we have our volume at STP, standard temperature and pressure, we can now figure out what would be the volume of, a, of one mole of gas. We need to figure out, first off, how many moles of hydrogen we actually ended up producing. To do that, we're going to need to take a look at the balanced chemical equation. So you reacted magnesium metal with hydrochloric acid. and produced hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. And when I balance this, it turns out that I end up needing to put a 2 there. But when actually looking at my relationship between magnesium and hydrogen gas, you can see it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So if I actually write this out, using the ratio oops, for every one mole of magnesium I should produce one mole of hydrogen gas therefore I should end up with the same number of moles of hydrogen gas so now I'm ready for my molar volume so for my molar volume here, remember we're trying to find the volume of one mole. Really all it is, is I'm trying to find the volume, so in this case, milliliters, for one mole. So it's a simple division. So my volume of my hydrogen gas at STP was 33. 0.5 milliliters. The number of moles that I produced was 0 0.0015. And when I divide these, I get a very large number. I get 22,333 milliliters per one mole. Now that's an awfully large number. So therefore, having this very, very large number, it might be easier to actually put it into liters. Remember the relationship between milliliters and a liter is a thousand, so therefore you get 22.3 liters. So therefore, one mole of hydrogen gas at standard temperature and pressure should occupy a volume of 22.3 liters. So the final thing we need to do is see how well we did. So we're going to do a percent error. Recall that percent error is how far did you miss the mark. Therefore we're taking the absolute value of the theoretical or accepted value minus our actual or our experimental value divided by our experiment divided by our theoretical value Oops, I apologize we don't need that error bar there and multiply it by a hundred percent for this one the accepted value or theoretical value is 22.4 liters of gas at STP which on a quick glance we didn't do too bad so final thing make sure you calculate your percent error 
we will be collecting class data as well. So be prepared to present your class, your data, um, so that we can get a class average.